Roswell flight test crew here on historic Cheat Mountain in West Virginia. We're using a FLIR thermal imager to detect water temperature variations in a river. This has important implications for habitat restoration for a native species of trout. No doubt about it, we're doing real science here. Well, let's get to it. All right. Following our preliminary testing in Morgantown, West Virginia, which you saw in our previous episode, we traveled 100 miles south to the Cheat Mountain Club. I asked our host, Paul Kinder, what made this such a historic location. The turn of the century was um, a destination for very famous people like Harvey Firestone and Thomas Edison and Henry Ford. They would come up here and stay and fish and just catch barrels of fish from the logs that we've read and, and researched in the past. In the decades that followed its heyday, the mountain's virgin spruce forest was clear cut and the river became almost uninhabitable for fish. And so we hope to help Mother Nature along a little bit in terms of restoring the brook trout fishery here. Thermal mapping that we're doing now with Raven is um, an incredible asset. Temperature is a, is a limiting factor in terms of trout growth and sustainability. The study area we're going to is so remote, the only means of getting there short of walking are these specialized rail cars that can drive both on the road and on the railroad track. Should be cool. En route, Paul pointed out some of the restoration features that he and his colleagues had installed in the river. Large boulders were placed in a V-shape pointing upstream, as you can see here. And the idea is that as water comes downstream, it has to go on the outside of the V and pretty much go uphill and tumble into the center. What it creates is a deep scour pool, which is a very great habitat situation for fish, especially trout. It's much colder. It's an area to hide, it's an area to ambush bait fish and other things that come down. If we prove that a drone with a thermal imaging camera can identify locations where cold water infiltrates the river, that would help them put future improvements where they will do the most good. So after an hour and a half by rail car, we've arrived here at the study area. This is actually the site of a former town called Spruce, which has long since fallen into decay. Anyway, in this vicinity, they've made some of the changes to help accommodate the brook trout and improve their chance of survival. This is where we're going to see whether or not this technology can really work. Paul laid out the thermal targets and recorded their precise location in order to be able to geo-rectify the data once he got it back to his lab. Then, we held our final mission briefing. See how you feel about going on up because up by that outhouse, which you can't see behind these trees, but it's, it's probably this distance and again. Okay, that's still no problem. And range the stream wise. goes back back this way. Okay. And there's actually some little feeder streams in there, which should be warmer in the sunlight. Yeah, no, I, this is real pliable. Okay. So let's do it. All right, sounds good. With Teckenstein and myself serving as visual observer and pilot, we guided Raven down the river with her FLIR thermal imaging camera capturing images of the ground below. As you can see here, we are using the white hot color palette. The river is on the left side of the screen and dry land is on the right. The black dots scattered across the landscape are the thermal targets we are using as landmarks. Subsequent analysis showed that we were able to detect colder water flowing into the river. As you can see in these still images. Our mission a success, we climbed back on the rail cars and headed for home. <laughs>